Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to another edition of Handicappers Corner brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads. I'm going to do force. We're going to go through the Saturday, June the 3rd races at Hastings. We do have seven races on tap. Uh, headed by, headlined by the uh, $50,000 Strawberry, Strawberry Moor, named after the great race mare, uh, the traveling Victor Mare, owned by uh, Campbell Rivers' finest, Aubrey and Jenny Roberts. Yes. Uh, of course, trained by Alan Jack. Legendary, AJ. Written by Jerry Algeen yep. and Dave Wilson. Uh, yep. Pretty much had all the mounts on Strawberry Moor. Won the first, won first ever race at Emerald Downs. Yeah, she had a cool mare, uh, Strawberry Moor. She didn't lose very often. No, she but, didn't. But uh, obviously fitting to have a race named in her honor. Well, we'll get right into the racing action uh, for the Saturday program. In race number one, we got three-year-old fillies here and a $16,000 claimer. Five signed on. We do have four winners and one maiden. Uh, Mayor Fair Lady is a maiden tackling uh, some winners in here. Uh, I, I've ended up on the two Is It Gold. I don't love Is It Gold, but it's just might this is get a, a little better trip. Mixed bag, yeah. This, this horse had a lot of trouble. Lost Iron Half. There's a lot yeah. of things that went on last time to contribute to her third place finish last time. And uh, come back with a couple of good works, signaling she's come out of the race good. Uh, Mariano, or Jose Mariano Asensio uh, retains the mount from Mark Colucci. He's been going great guns this spring. And uh, I, I got to try Is It Gold to defeat the three, Sherry Sugar Rush and the four, a uh, total offense. Sherry Sugar Rush, uh, it's a pretty big, you know, Enrique Gonzalez jumping aboard is, and a lot of speed in yeah. the race is going to help. This I is know a there's big tons plus of speed for Sherry Sugar Rush. Looks like there's going to be three or four speed horses in here, and Sherry Sugar Rush might just, you know, mind her own business in the back of the pack, make one run, and perhaps win the money. Uh, so I put her in for second. I put the four horse total defense in for third. Have to respect uh, her on the class drop, right yeah. against, uh, you know, obviously Allowance Company. Her first two runs, first race was very good. Second race, you know, some, some struggles after going wide. But uh, she's better than that race. And yeah. uh, David Lopez re-rides for trainer Glenn Todd, who got off to a great start yes. last weekend uh, as he resumed his training career. Uh, I went 2-3-4 and four in the Saturday opener. I don't know much to add. I thought Izzy Gold ran a valiant race last time, considering that, as you, you mentioned, uh, she lost an iron in the first turn there. Uh, everything went wrong for her, and she still only got beat four lengths, only a, a length for a second, right. uh, beat by a very live jazz lady. Uh, and I got the same two bottom horse. I put total defense in second. The fact that Glenn Todd yep. thought enough of her to have her in allowance race, now she drops into a 16 for three-year-old fillies. She fits nicely in here. And David Lopez riding as good as anybody right now. Uh, I got her in the second spot, and I put Sherry Sugar Rush with Enrique Gonzalez board. I agree with you. I think Enrique will suit this filly. And in a race where there's lots of speed, it should set up well for her. And the Mike Anderson Barn, of course, starting to heat up. Two, four, three for me in the first. On to the second, a maiden eight for three-year-old and up. Colts and Geldings going six and a half furlongs, field of seven. I went to the six here, speaking of the uh, Mike Anderson Barn. Only got beat in neck last time by Nacho out of the uh, Dino Cotolinos Barn. Yep. Nacho got to a fairly comfortable yep. lead, just galloped around there and uh, couldn't quite get to him, but a really good effort trying to run him down. Very live in here. I like Humphrey Ladd right back. I put Floodwatch, the Glenn Todd horse in here. First start this year, but there's another one. They thought high enough of him that uh, he was running maiden special weights last year. For him. They made 52 for him. for him in the Washington sale. He was running maiden special weights last year. Something went amiss in his last start because that was on the 29th of August. We didn't see him again. Yeah. Shows up here for the uh, $8,000 tag, and usually when they make that kind of drop out of the Glenn Todd barn, they're very tough. I like flood watch in second. I put Footman, a horse that obviously fits in here. He's a four-year-old running against three-year-olds. Ran against some tough horses last year and uh, fits well in here. It, encouraging to see Richard Hamill take them out. Six, four, and five for me. Yeah, I, I don't I don't love anyone in here. I've gone to Footman. Uh, I don't know how much sprinter he is, but I'm going to put him on top. I like the you know the work tab has been excellent. Uh, you know, yeah, it's 59 six, and four. Six furlong work back down to a five and 59 and a good snappy half. Richard's been aboard for a couple of those works. And uh, I'll try Footman to defeat Humphrey Ladd. It's always good to take the four year olds over yeah. the three year olds. And I'll try Footman over Humphrey Ladd. I put if you can in for third for Mark Cluche. This horse had some upside. Works are good. And uh, a couple of his races last year were, were solid. And, you know, has, and Amadeo's been riding well for Mark. I put. I'm going to go five, six, and three in the second race. On to the third. This is the Strawberry Morn, the aforementioned Strawberry Morn. Uh, going a mile in the 16th, first chance. Uh, actually, this is the first mile 16th race of the season. Yep. And uh, the four snuggles uh, did a few things wrong in her first up yes. run. And uh, wouldn't load, and you know, there was, couldn't, wouldn't get to the gate. And, it took I don't a long know, time just to get one of those to the gate. days where she just her, yeah. almost. But then she got, and she got miles back, and then made his 
miraculous run. Then went inside, kind of died on the inside a little bit. You know, when, ho when, spe when horses make, are making a run, sometimes diving on the inside deadens their run or that that you know the action that they the, had uh, because you're diving momentum, to the inside, yeah. the momentum. Is, and I, I know she couldn't go outside. There was there was someone else running there, but. Uh, so that Snuggles ran a better than look race, so the horse didn't get beat much for a second. I gotta take her to defeat Dear Lily, who, you know, we're at Snuggles' distance. Dear Lily, definitely a, a, an excellent six and a half furlong horse. She's as sharp as she's ever been in her life. But, you know, Dear Lily's had, what, six or five races this year, and, um, it was Snuggles know, first. Snuggles yeah. first start of the year, so I think the tables could be turned here. I put the two horse Castellani, who's another one, uh, you know, uh, the mile of the 16 is going to help her. All her form in Ca Northern California yeah. was long. It's all long. It, we're not seeing the best of her of yet sprint in these sprints this spring, and I think she'll be more of a, you know, a player in here. I think you need all three of them. I went 4 1 and 2. I got the same horses. I actually put Castellani on top just because Snuggles worries me. It really. Not yeah. wanting to load last time, it took, yeah. him, it took her for it's, a long time to get to the gate. A little, a little alarming, she does yeah. seem to be getting a little bit bad at the gate, and that can take a lot out of a horse. So I'm going to try and defeat her. She's going to be her favorite. I'm going to try and defeat her with Castellani, Phil Hall, Peter Radicop, Enrique Gonzalez. These guys have been on fire this year. And uh, as you mentioned, this is a filly that wants to go long. All her California form is going long. And her first two uh, sprints here were decent. Only got beat a couple both times. Dear Lily's lights out sprinting. She's very tough to beat. So I'm going to she try Castellani. She could, know, she could win this one. She's ran good enough Snuggles the isn't the Snuggles of last year yet. Yeah. Maybe she will be uh, on this day and Castellani still has to prove herself here. She only got beat going a mile and an eighth two years ago. She got beat a length and a quarter behind Touching Promise and yeah. Delta Colleen. So she is like a classy enough mare. Yeah. She's just a deadly sprinter. So I have her on the ticket, but I don't like her on top. I do like Castellani over Snuggles. As I mentioned, just worried me a little bit about Snuggles last time yeah. with her hesitation to go to the gate. So I put her in second spot. I have Dear Lily in the third spot. I went two, four, and one, but I, I agree with Mike. I have those three yeah. for sure in your early pick four tickets. Two, four, one for me. On the fourth, a maiden 16,000 for three and up Colts and Geldings. Going at six and a half, field a nine. I went to the six here. He's Gatsby. Great second last time behind McCallum. Only got beat a half length and closed well. And I see quite a bit of speed in here. You have Texas Kid of speed. You have Jackson Teller speed. Liquid Metal speedy. I see a lot happening on the front end, and I think it sets up well for He's Gatsby. Sylvia Gregory could get off the schneid here, and uh, good to see Amadeo Perez stick with him. He's Gatsby on top of Colonel Kevin I put in the first spot. Uh, Mike Anderson thought enough of him to run for 25 first out this year. Now he drops in for 16. He's got a race behind his yep. belt. Ran into the, a pretty tough field there with Catch Me, Sanawar, Kelson. Uh, Silvina Morales now climbs aboard. I like that move for Mike Anderson. I got him in the second spot. And of course, Liquid Metal has to be respected in here. Moved forward greatly in his second start of the year. First race, he gets beat by nine. Comes back, only gets beat by four after pushing a pretty honest pace in 22-1 and one and 45-4. And, and Enrique Gonzalez sticks with him. He's super live in here. I went six, nine, and seven. Yeah, I went to liquid metal. I, I don't see as much speed as you do. I don't think Jackson Teller is going out there at all. He was really hustled the blinkers on last time to get out there. Yeah, And really did off. ruin liquid metal's chances. Liquid metal broke well. Almost had a length lead. Couldn't clear, though. Richard got up on the inside and... Uh, you know, his horse ended up finishing well back, and but Liquid Metal battled on well to be third. Liquid Metal's first start got carried out really wide on the first turn. His horse had some significant issues. He hasn't had a clean trip yet. I don't know if he's going to get a clean trip with Texas Kid in the race. He's maybe have to sit second, relax, and then maybe put that one away. They did run the same day. He ran 14 lengths faster than uh, uh, Lick, uh, Texas Kid did, or 14, uh, 14 points faster. Uh, Texas Kid ran a maiden special weight on the same day as Liquid Metal. I just think Liquid Metal's the best horse. He's got to be capitalized on a crazy pace tool. Did manage to run into the second spot, had every shot to win, couldn't do it. That's the only thing that disappointed me, and he will be a short price. I can see he's got to be winning this race for sure. Yeah. But I'm just saying, Liquid Metal is probably the better horse, but he must avoid a pace duel. I went 7 6, and I put the four horse Jackson Teller with blinkers off. Uh, that's, you know, he's not going to show that kind of speed again uh, with blinkers off, especially with Asensio on him. Uh, in for third, I think he'll run more like he did in his first start when he was a very game runner up. I went yeah. seven, six, and four in race number four. I think we got the same three horses, so I think those are the, obviously the ones to beat. On to the fifth race, this, uh, this kick off your late pick three, three year old fillies here in an optional $25,000 claimer. And uh, I've gone to the three Yukon Bell, I mean, she has to be respected in here. Uh, a couple of on-the-board performances behind Dazzling Dawn. 
Uh, last time much better, ran a pretty, I thought a very good race. Dazzling Johns is very good right now, running great sprints. Yukon Bell needs to go fast, long. Yukon yeah. Bell needs to go long, yeah. basically. But there's no long races, there's another sprint. The next sprint, or the next state, pardon me, is a sprint again, which, I don't know, it's just a futile effort to try and sprint against Dazzling Dawn. So a good way to avoid Dazzling Dawn was to be in this allowance race, and that's where she surfaces. I think she's gonna be pretty dangerous in here. See, it looks like there's some speed. Uh, not that she needs the help, but I think UConn Bill, your two-year-old Philly champion last year, will be pretty dangerous. But the Six Horse Baby's got track, is on a nice little roll, took advantage of a fast pace last time. Uh, you know, she's got to prove herself in stakes company, uh, or, or against the Yukon Bell types, but still, she's got to win, and she's going the right way, and uh, that's a positive, and I think she needs to be respected. And I put the five classic statement in for third. Good runner-up effort. The baby's got track last time after battling on the pace. Unfortunately, there is speed in here. You got Eco Charge, you got Jazz Lady, Morning Blur is an extra marital on There's the outside. A lot of there are four yeah. solid speed horses in here that are going to make life a little miserable for anyone that wants to be near the head end. But all these fellas seem to need the head end, so we'll see how it works out. But I went three, six, and five in the finish. I agree with you. Yukon Bell has run uh she run five times. Every time she's running the stake, never miss the board. That little dip below, even though, you know, it's not her ideal distance. Uh, no, she's a better round horse. She's not she, a great she, sprinter. Yeah, even her, she won rally. sprinting last year because she won the sales stake, and it wasn't a, you know, it was it was the ti the timing was right. The futurity, she had a dreadful trip, but she her that route race was was her best race. It was career. a fantasy, of course. And yeah. even even in her in the sales stake, she ran more like a, a route race, right? Her yeah. first start, she laid off it, Way made off. a comfortable move, and. Uh, no surprise, that, you know, she's a Drosselmeyer uh, winner of the Breeders' they Cup Classic. Uh, so she wants to go long, but I do have her on top. I would have both, though, because Baby's got track, ran, you know, she basically just won this race mm -hmm. and uh, has proven dangerous at this distance. And as you mentioned, there's lots of speed to set up these two. I do like the closer here. I like Yukon Bell. And Baby's got track could surprise. I, Yukon Bell is the best horse in the race. She should win it. But if, for a little bit of a price, throw Baby's got track in your ticket. Oh, I would definitely. have those two. And uh, as far as the... Uh, Speed horses. I settled on uh, Jazz Lady. I kept Jazz Lady in the third yeah, spot. Very impressive race last time. Uh, ran away from one by three. It was coming out of tough races down south, so she fits in here. And uh, come back to work in a minute and four for Greg Tracy, who's having a strong year. Three, six, and four for me. In the fifth. On to the sixth. Three and a four thousand dollar claimed event for older horses, non-winners. Mile of sixteen. Of the year. Going to mile sixteenth. Our Ten second long one. We've got a full field of 10 here. Good field we got them spread out here. I took Rosie's notice. I thought I a good it. race, her first start, uh, running against horses that had had it out. And uh, only got beat two and a half behind Ace Deuce. Wise boss. We beat like a three quarters of the length by Majestic Mark. is going to be a short price in here. Rosie's notice is going to give you some value. And I like the addition of David Lopez. David Lopez, as I mentioned before, riding I think really David Lopez well. is riding as, uh, better than anybody here. Is it riding, he is riding here better than anyone. Yes, David, David well. Lopez is getting nice horses, but he's riding really well. He's not getting them beat, that's for yeah. sure. He's put him in a good spot. Even horses that are a bit of a price, mm -hmm. he's bringing in. I like Rosie's notice on top, a majestic mark in the second spot. He's going to be a short price. Only got beat a length and a half last time. And, uh, you know, a horse in here that has to be respected, that's for sure. I got him in the second spot. And I threw Mark in the third spot. He's got an out. Now he finally gets to go long. He's a much better horse going long. And the fact that he's got a race under his belt, I mean, I didn't like him at all in there because at six and a half, he's never right. run that, that distance. Got a race now, now he goes long, look for an improvement from him. I went five, two, nine. Yeah, I can see Rosie's notice for sure. Uh, just I was between the one and five. Uh, I ended up on Silent Native. I wasn't native. crazy about Silent Native just because, I mean, he's never he missed wants a board going he long. He wants the route. He need, he's a speed road horse. Yeah. And he, he's going to get the lead in here. He, He's had a couple of tough trips sprinting against better horses. He's down for four. Yes. Uh, maybe he's not as good as he was last fall, but he'll well he'll need to be as good. But you know, because he's even though you drop for four thousand, these horses are still good, solid. One forty five and change or one forty six horses. Talk horses charm, still street run. map mark. He's got horses not, with a lot of backlash. I mean, the uh, street man, these are nice horses that you know you, you just can't run your B game and win. Just because you're dropping, and that you know, he's seen a tough track for that. Uh, but Silent, Silent Native, uh, I, th I thought showed so a little bit, a little more courage last time, racing wide, and uh, I thought ran on reasonably well. I thought, I thought his best races were going long last year. If he can get the lead, then I think he'll be dangerous. If he doesn't get the lead, I don't like him. If he's, yeah. if he's in behind Majestic Mark, 
my eye candy and bluegrass man or whoever chooses to go, and then I don't I don't care for him. But I agree with Rosie's notice. This horse should have been better than its last race. Uh, Amadeo Perez chooses Silent Native over Rosie's notice, but uh, I think David Lopez, as you mentioned, riding well. Uh, but this horse did have a brutal trip down on the inside. Would have been way better than his fifth place performance, and he's not a sprinter. But his best races are going long. He but he's got up. that race, right? That's perfect. Always Lisa got the race. set him up for a good route race, and uh, his best races are going along. I put the six-horse street map. I, I don't mind this horse at all. Yeah, totally. Salvino I can see Morales him. and John Snow, they've, they've hooked up with this horse in the past. Uh, there could be some speed in here, and a street map will come running. I thought he ran well last time against no pace. So, I mean, Joey had like a five-length lead after the opening quarter in that race, going in 20 you know, easy fractions. And this horse still did well to be running fourth. I, I thought it was a good effort. I went one, five, and six in the sixth. On to seventh and final race, $16,000 older horses going uh, six, only six furlongs. I, I missed that. Six that's furlongs. Six, that's say six. It does. does say six. I wonder if it's six and a half or not. Is that a typo? That I, might be I, a, I typo. a typo. I, I, I got to get the gig. The, I'm, I'm guessing it's a I typo. I got to get the cheaters on. Yeah, these horses this already ran six and a half. I know, that's odd, but it, that might be a correction as we get towards final. Uh, but as of taping right now, it does say six, or it doesn't matter. Uh, I think it is six and a half. Yeah. But uh, Bluegrass Angus, uh, I think he's going to be tough to beat. I went to Burnham, though. Uh, Bluegrass Angus on the class drop, but Burnham had a brutal trip going six from the 10 hole last time yeah. and still didn't get beat all that far was... behind runaway winner or runaway leader. It's in command. Uh, he's dropping. I went 5-1-3. Mighty Fraser's always tough. I left out my born at the track. I really like the horse, but he, he is, you know, stepping up and also getting, you know, he's not going to get the same pace scenario we got last time. They're a comfortable trip. Maybe he can handle it. Maybe he can sit off of Bluegrass Angus after the conflict uh, and, and sit a good third. I don't know, but if he can do that, maybe... Maybe you can do it, uh, <laughs> but I did like Born at the Track last time. Yes, you did. Paid nineteen dollars, Mike. Nice mutual. To not following back for sixteen thousand, but um, it's a nice race. There's a lot of nice horses. In yeah, here. and this race came up like a, a bit of a twenty-five with there's some pretty nice little colts. I went five, one, and three. I went Burnham. I think Burnham's the one that will. Uh, he he came back to work really well after that race. He just had no chance from the ten hole going six, and I thought he was very. His performance was quite admirable. Uh, in defeat in that race going uh, that short distance. I left out Lassie's reward too. That was another one. That I know another really one's live. Well. Yeah. The behind uh, Born of the Track. The track. Uh, but, I but know. Yeah, I... tough race. Good, good good race. You got horses that are in form like Born of the Track and Lassie's reward. Quite a few other ones that are out of form and where do you, that are class, a little classier. Where do you, you know, how do you I know. weigh that? And it's a, that? That's the difficult part. This was a tough one. one. This is a, a race where I would go deep because, I mean, you go through it. Bluegrass Angus can win after the conflict can win. Muddy Fraser can win. Yeah, no, Royal it, Briar has been, been tough at 16 uh, in, in the past. Burn and born on the track. Fife for last award. You can make a case for all of them. They're I nice, landed on the same horse. horse as you. Burn them. Anytime this horse runs for 16, he's deadly. He's got an out. As you mentioned, it was a brutal trip. It was for 25, and it was going with six furlongs from the 10 hole. It's a death sentence from the 10 hole. That's with, miserable. With, with, a, uh, you know, with an off-the-pace horse. That, no, know, it's absolutely you're, miserable. You have no position. Yeah, no, it's miserable. So I like him coming back for Mike Anderson, as I mentioned. Mike's barn starting to heat up. Our leading trainer the last couple of years. Uh, I do like Burnham a lot on top of Mighty Fraser. This horse has ran two great races, both at 16,000 uh, for trainer Sandy Gann, in for 16,000. Again, as we mentioned, Red Hot David Lopez, course aboard for him. For my third horse, I mean, you mentioned, I don't mind Pfeiffer. Mark's yeah, horses are running good right now. He's a cool horse. Oh. Third in that yeah. same race that uh, Burnham he comes can work out a trip. of. And in for 16000 for the first time, and Amadeo Perez, who had options in here, sticks with him. But, yeah, a, a tough race, a race where you want to take a lot of them. I went 5-3-7 and seven in the nightcap. That'll do it for our analysis of the Saturday program. Next up. up next on screen will be picks. There Mike, we go. as always, you're up first. Race Grab your glasses. One. I got the small uh, prints. I got, oh, yeah, you do. Uh, back in race number one, go. what are the two? Is it gold? 2-3-4 in the Saturday opener. Race number two went to the five footmen. Hoping he can sprint. Uh, five, six, and three for me in race two. Race number three, one of the four, Snuggles. Get back on track, Snuggles. I think she can. Uh, and the one, Dear Lily, for second, and the two, Castellani, for third. Good, excellent feature race, yeah. though, the Strawberry Morn. Race number four to kick off the, the uh, late win four. I went to the seven, Liquid Metal, seven, six, and four. Race number five, I went to the three, Yukon Bell, over the six, Baby's Got Track, and the five, Classic Statement. Race number six, I went to the one, Silent Native, over the five, Rosie's Notice, one, five, six for me in the seventh and final. As we just mentioned, went to the five. Burnham, I'm going to go five, one, and three. Up next will be my picks. There we go. Back in the first, I went to the two. Is it gold? I agree with Mike. Over the four and the three, 
In the second, I went to the six, Humphrey Ladd over the four and the five. In the third, the Strawberry Morn, I went to the two, Castellani over the four Snuggles and the one Dear Lily. I would have all three of those on your ticket. In the fourth, I went to the six, He's Gatsby over the nine and the seven. In the fifth, I like the three, Yukon Bell over the six and the four. In the sixth, I went to the five, Rosie's Notice over the two and the nine. And in the nightcap, I agree with Mike again, number five, Burnham over the three and the seven. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in to Handicapper's Corner. Uh, first race is at 1.50 yep. on the Saturday program. Of course, racing resumes on Sunday, uh, at, also at 1.50. We do have eight races on tap. We do have uh, an excellent feature race. Yes, uh, the older it, boys' is, take. Is it the Johnny Longman? Yes, it is. is it the Longman 6,000. 6, of course, named for uh, the great Johnny Longman, who would have his 6,000th win here on eight, right, August the right 18th. Here. 1965 on Prince Scorpion. Was it a nice day here? Bro? It was um, a little cloudy, but uh, <laughs> the beanie was on. Uh, August 18th, 1965, when Prince Scorpion did win his uh, uh, Johnny Longman's 6,000th yeah. race. 12 horses. It's going to be great. I 12 know. horses. The gate is full. Uh, going, uh, that's amazing. Uh, Twelve of them going a mile. That's 16. awesome. It's and and uh, yeah, we'll go over it obviously in our podcast more. But yeah. really interesting race. A lot of uh, class class horses in there. Modern drew the nine. Opportunistic twelve. Sorry about nothing. Like, he's back in last yeah, year's he's got Derby the two. Win. Calgary uh, Caper last year's. Uh, he drew the rail. Uh, he's yeah, on the rail. Last it's a really good race. Uh, but that's on the Sunday program. But uh, as always, if you can't make it out Saturday and you're out in the South Surrey area, please yep. do come on over here at the Derby Barn Grill. Well, I've got lots of simulcasting action on as well as Hastings on the big screen. Uh, lots of great food specials and uh, everything. So come on out to the Derby Barn Grill and enjoy the atmosphere here. On behalf of Drew, thanks everyone for tuning in to Handicapper's Corner. And we'll see you next time here at the Derby Barn Grill.